Press is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, hello to everyone, and it's been quite a writing month for me already, working with authors all over the world, and one of the things that comes up, you've heard me say it not once, not twice, but actually a gazillion times, is how essential it is to understand that this thing called being a writer, being an author, is a business. And with us today, for the hour, is someone who has business in her DNA, it's in her middle name, and Jane Friedman is the author of the just released The Business of Being a Writer, and Jane is, if you're not already following her blog, The Hot Sheet, I'm going to highly recommend it. She's a columnist for Publishers Weekly. She speaks all over the country about the power of being an author, of being a writer, of how to be successfully published, and how to be successful yourself as an author once it's successfully published. So with that, Jane, welcome to Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. Thank you so um, much, Judith. A pleasure to be here. Oh, I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I'm a fan. I've been following you for a gazillion years. Sometimes I have the privilege of following you at writers' conferences. I've never had the privilege of actually meeting you in person, so hopefully that'll happen someday. I'm sure it will. All right. So let's let's really, I want to really dig uh, dive into your book, and I want to recommend to everyone to get it. It, it's an excellent, excellent book, and I have it actually in hand as we speak today. It's divided in, into multiple parts. So I, I think, Jane, what I always like to ask my experts is, what do you see the ongoing continual mistake, and what's the remedy to, to the writing, the author process? I would say the biggest mistake I see across all types of authors is impatience or uh, a a rush to get to market, a rush to get uh, things done when a lot more thought and time either spent on the manuscript or the marketing or thinking about who you're actually trying to target, all of that would produce a a better product and a better experience. And and I will have to do an amen to that. In fact, my discussion maybe uh, 30 minutes before we started was with one of my clients in California who's flying out to spend three days with me next week and was that all I wanted to do was sit down quiet time and read through the uh, her manuscript who has gone through editing is now in layout. Mm. I just want her to read it, want her to highlight it, edit, what doesn't it need? If there's anything in there that doesn't move her novel forward, mm. note it and we will take care of it when she's here. And that's all I wanted to do, just quiet time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And we've been working on this for quite a while, so I'll be excited to get it out. All right. So the, the impatience is huge. Rush to publish. The RTP syndrome is what I hit on a lot. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. And, and it just the whole issue of really uh, more thought needs to be put into stuff um, and, and that. And it rarely is, uh, rarely have I seen a book that absolutely is critical, essential, has to get out next week or next month. It could wait a few more months. Would you agree? Oh, totally. Uh, I think most people don't really uh, accept that their book, it, it's not urgent uh, to the readership and it, it can be uh, successfully released if given enough time, whether that's one year or three years and more carefully thought through. Mm-hmm. And so, it, so we, when we take that, so let's now start through the process of being a writer. And, I, and Jane, I've always separated writers from authors because writers are in all kinds of areas where authors do books. Um, I mean, that's that's what I think. Am I off base here? No, I think we it it depends on the audience you're talking to. But I think that's a fine distinction. 
All right. So, and so my, for, for author, you, your guide to book publishing, we're author, we're writers who write books. <laughs> That's yes. what we do. And we do other things to support our books with our writing. Yes. And that's where marketing and all those other things come in. So you really, your first chapter in the business of being a writer, it really starts out with, can you make your living as a writer? You want to expand upon that? Well, part of the inspiration for this book was hearing so many people at conferences express confusion about what they would actually earn once they had a book out, especially in the more creative writing community. I think there's Mm -hmm. this misconception Mm -hmm. that once you sell the first book, you're all set. Like now that somehow equates to a full-time living, but it's pretty rare for any writer or author to make a living fully off book sales or fully off their writing, especially at the beginning of a career in the first five years, maybe even 10 years. So it's a, it's a building process. So once you get that first book written and published, that is your job's not over. It's just beginning. And and I think you're going to go back to what you said. The very first mistake is they're too impatient. Correct. <laughs> because it, it is truly building. I am one of those authors who made her living off her book for 30 years. And it, it, it the first book was very successful, but I still had a full-time job. It, it really was another, oh my gosh, another uh, seven years before I finally transitioned from being just to a speaker and author. There was an yeah. evolution to it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I've seen the same uh, trajectory in my own career where I had a full-time job for mm-hmm. the first 15 years. And during that time, I was also engaging in a bit of a side hustle that by the time I was ready to go full-time writer freelance, uh, I had the foundation laid. Mm-hmm. And and I think so that's whatever we need to say. Don't quit your day job is what Jane's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Don't quit your day job. <laughs> and I think some writers actually do better when they have a day job. It it actually just takes off some of the pressure mm-hmm. and that because some people just get paralyzed once they realize, oh, it's all on me now and I don't have any kind of cushion. So there are some mm-hmm. personalities, as I talk about in the book, that you know you sh- you should just rely on whether that's a part time or a full time day job to to help support what you're doing on the artistic side. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the artistic side is absolutely the stress releaser you're, you're you need from that day job. Mm-hmm. It opens yeah. up. Uh, yeah, I have an orthopedic surgeon. I mean, it's boy, she is un- unbelievable. But what she really loves, she loves to write, and she is coming out with three novels. We've got them. We're staging them now. Summer, winter next summer um, that she's doing. And of course they all involve the medical field. That's what she knows. Mm-hmm. But and she she and she's a good writer, Jane. I mean I'm tickled with her. But that what you have is that it is the outset, it's the outlier that actually makes her even better at her job. Yeah. Absolutely. So had that. Listen, you just talked about the different personalities. Can we get into those? Well, uh, there are probably as many personalities as there are writers, but I do find that when I'm talking to an audience that's at, let's say, your average writing conference, you tend to see writers fall into two groups. There's the group that is very much focused on the creative aspect and the ins- and, and trying to find the muse and being inspired to write mm-hmm. this great work of art. Mm-hmm. And the earning a living from it may or may not be important to them. They may have mm-hmm. a life where it's not important that they earn any money from their writing. And then you have another group where people are much more uh, focused on seeing very specific goals. Sometimes they're financial goals from the writing and they're even thinking about writing to market in order to succeed. Now, I'm not saying that either side is right, and there's like I have no judgment for either side, but it's nice to have a balance of those two things, mm-hmm. uh, if or at, at least have awareness about what your goals are and what you're in the game for, because that can help help you with next steps and also help you filter out a lot of advice that actually isn't meant for you. Mm-hmm. And and so <clears throat> that's where I see I'm I'm a number two. I really do write uh, with distinct goals in what I do. But um, I know at a lot of the writers' conferences, which I know that you frequent too, um, that you have people who just love to write. And, and mm-hmm. boy, go for it. Just love to write. Their goal is really not 
to create that book. And, and, and God knows I don't want to market it. I mean, that, that's the other bugaboo. Yes, uh, yes. That other people have. So it, it's important to understand, I think, which side of the fence you, you come on. And then don't beat yourself up for whichever way your druthers are. I think that's important. It is. And there are also writers I meet who they probably only have one book in them, mm-hmm. which is okay. Um, especially I see this on the memoir side. Um, and then there are other writers I meet who they're really focused on actually producing as many books as possible. And uh, I see this often in genre fiction where they see that to be successful, you need a fairly well-established series. So yeah, very different strategies, very different work approaches. Mm -hmm. Well, and I also think that for authors who, especially who are seeking agents, and this is in our fiction side, who are seeking agents really do need to show that they've got, uh, I I think, a game plan in play that there's going to be more books than they're not a one book pony. Yes, absolutely. that, that's my experience. But Jane, we we have you know a short time to break, but I would love you to kiss on because I, I can't think of anyone who has really got her hands on what's going on in the publishing arena, what changes and what we, we can start it and then we can come back and finish it. But can, can we kind of take a, a microscope and see what's going on in the kaleidoscope of publishing right now? Yeah, I actually just returned from Book Expo uh, in New York, which was earlier uh, this month. And what's interesting about the current market is that nonfiction and children's are really uh, creating the growth that we now see in addition to the audiobook format. Fiction has flatlined. And there are a lot of reasons for that Mm. that we can can explore. Uh, But some of it has to do with the political situation. And that's another reason why nonfiction happens to be selling better than ever. Gosh, I would think that uh, we need fiction to escape the political situation. (laughs) Well, you know, the one category of fiction that's doing great is dystopian fiction. Oh, well, uh, there you go. Indeed. That's kind of like, okay, this is where we're going. Um, I I mean, certainly we've seen a few of those ourselves. All right, we're going to take a quick break. With us is fabulous Jane Friedman. She's the author of The Business of Being a Writer. You're listening to Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing, and we'll be back. is your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these is there a book in you or another author you will show you how to create develop and publish your book without being good if you already have a book out You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed Jazz, punch, and panache. Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, 
business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With me is Jane Friedman and her book, The Business of Being a Writer, is one of the books that I'm going to be recommending to all my clients. It's a must-have. They must read it. Along with the other book, Jane, I would like to recommend is Stephen King's On Writing. Um, just because I love all the nuggets in there. Yeah, it's it's a classic, a wonderful book. Yeah, it is a classic. You, I mean, you read a little bit about what he got into and why he does it. But when I first looked at it, I said, do I really want to read from a guy who writes horror? Then I realized <laughs> he writes other things besides horror. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we were talking about the kaleidoscope that came out from Book Expo that just recently was held earlier in the month in New York, and uh, Jane's revealed that Flatline is continuing in the fiction area with the exception of dystopian. And nonfiction is soaring as well as audiobook. What else did you see, Jane? Well, I, I might comment further on the fiction Flatline because I know that Great. concerns so many people and they're yes. wanting to know why that is. And there, there's like a good news, bad news part of it. I think the good news part is that the backlist or older titles are actually performing really well. It's mm-hmm. the new titles that have a hard time breaking out. So we haven't seen any really big fiction books, especially from a debut novelist, come out. Like if you look back at one of the last big novels, like maybe Girl on the Train would, would be one of them. But publishers haven't really broken something out like that recently. And that's one mm-hmm. of the contributing factors. Mm-hmm. Another contributing factor to that uh, is probably pricing. So traditional publishers price the ebooks pretty high compared to what you can find, for instance, from Amazon Publishing's own imprints and also from self-publishing authors. So there's a lot of suspicion that perhaps fiction isn't down if you're able to factor in all of the self-publishing activity. It's only down for the traditional publishers. So, yeah, it's kind of a good news, bad news situation. Well, and it's also about that uh, yeah, that uh, a lot of times, especially I find with fiction authors, they're, if you, I'm going to go back to your personalities, that one side just likes to write and make a living, and the other have distinct goals, and they want to write to market. And I think a lot of our fiction authors, especially who are re- writing multiple books, will say, well, I do love to write, but I really do want to write to the market. But there's now there's a little third one that comes in, but I really don't want to market. Right. And where nonfiction people realize I got to do marketing to reach out. There's a, there's this part of that. But fiction authors are a little bit more reluctant. Have, is, is that your experience, too? It is my experience. And I, I find that sometimes people just have the wrong idea of what it means to market a book. Oh. Uh, they they're envisioning things that feel kind of smarmy or that would be annoying to other people when really authentic engaged marketing is just about understanding who you're trying to target and giving them something that you know they're going to be interested in. It's not about forcing your way through the door. Mm -hmm. So I think marketing can be as much of a creative and imaginative act as the writing itself. That may sound a little Pollyanna-ish to to some fiction writers who are very artistic artistically minded, but I, I think that you can be creative in how you reach out and use your own work as the basis for that type of campaign to reach readers. I've had that exact same dialogue uh, recently with some of my authors. And I said, there's, there's, there are creative ways that you can do it, but I think what you always have to do is come with passion to whoever you're interacting with and the joy of the story or the horror of the story, or the unusual, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, that energy and enthusiasm is contagious. So it's being able to convey that in a way that gets other people excited. And part of the marketing also, Jane, you have, I bet you you have seen 
um, more than a truckload of god awful covers. <laughs> when, yes. <laughs> when, when you've been, why is it that people are reluctant to invest if they're going to do self and independent publishing? Why are they reluctant to really invest in someone who can design it? Well, some people don't realize, I think, at the outset, how critical the cover is to making that great first impression or how it's basically your number one marketing tool to someone who doesn't know you or or this book yet. Mm-hmm. People form really... Um, they, they tend to form their identity around the books on their shelves and the sorts of books that they read. Um, it's just like, you know, our music collections or other things that we display mm-hmm. in our house. It, it conveys something about who we are. So the cover has to convey something about the type of book this person wants and likes to read or wants to be seen reading. And that takes a designer to pull off effectively. It does. Who, who understands the genre. Mm-hmm. who understands that. And and I guess maybe, Jane, we need to also put it back also on the author, him or herself, that they need to understand what their genre is mm-hmm. and what is typically the attractor. What's the magnet? What, what attracts them to pick up their favorite read? And it's usually the cover starts. Yeah, the cover starts it all. And especially in online retail now where... Mm-hmm. Covers get shown at thumbnail size. So much has to be conveyed in just such a tiny space. You need really uh, clean, clear, crisp uh, contrast, something that's going to pop well. Uh, Like in the customers who bought also bought line, you want your title, your cover to to stand out well. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the first things I tell all my authors is you immediately reduce whatever the cover has been sent to you as a sample to 25%. Yeah. And see what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where you go from there. All mm-hmm. right. Any other trends you see popping out from Book Expo? Well, I briefly mentioned the digital audiobooks. It's the darling format right now for traditional publishers because ebook uh, the ebook format has been declining since roughly twenty thirteen. It's declined. Right. 28% of the market to 20% of the market for traditional publishers. And so digital audio has made up the gap. Digital audio carries higher price points. And even though it's still a tiny percentage of the market, let's say I think it's maybe about 5% right now of the overall market, um, It's it, this is where publishers are basically doubling their title counts, um, creating um, more avenues for experimentation and also trying to avoid Amazon from getting a foothold there that will be impossible to break. Cause of course, Amazon owns audible, which is the biggest yeah. audiobook market. And they've also been investing heavily into original audio. So there's an interesting battle going on right now for intellectual property. Well, Amazon is also investing heavily into advertising. Yes. On, on television. There's very visual examples of, for using audio. So are you saying that, I mean, I knew that ebooks were 20, 21%. I thought audio was a little bit higher. So are you saying print books now are over 70%? Well, the if we look at the global book market for the mm-hmm. big five publishers, Penguin Random House, HarperCollins, Simon & Schuster, they see the market as basically 80, 20 print and E. And but that they they throw that figure around without factoring in digital audio because for a long time digital audio was only one or two percent, it was like a rounding error. But now you know they have to really modify that to say probably something like seventy five twenty five, uh, so five percent digital audio. It is a small small percentage of the market, but it's I think that's why it's growing in the double digit figures thirty percent year on year because it is starting from a small base. Well, I I know I get all my authors to do audio now Um, and whether they do it with their own voice they they need a professional we're going back to editing where you have editors for your book guess what there are editors for audio people Mm. yeah (laughs) so take advantage of that all right um anything else before we jump on to another topic no no we can okay great what's going on with literary agents are they going to survive oh yes they're going to survive. I mean, there's always uh, a, a range of people who believe they're middlemen who have outlived their usefulness. But the truth is, most authors, even if they are business savvy, 
aren't interested in negotiating contracts, nor are they interested in playing bad cop for themselves during Mm -hmm. the publishing process. They are more comfortable having basically what amounts to a business manager involved. So uh, I don't see them going away. In fact, I think part of what they do could be expanded because I see one of the missing pieces for a lot of authors, especially those who are really successful, do this full time. They need more kind of back-end admin support to help handle all of the different facets of a digital era business. So I'm thinking here of things like, you know, your your branding and social presence online, because a lot of authors now have to hire companies to assist with this. I'm not saying agents should step in, but there's a lot more to the business now than there ever was, and agents can help facilitate the deals that are needed uh, to keep keep things moving forward. And if- and, you know, you did use a phrase, the good cop, bad cop. I know that the um, William Morris used to be my agent. And uh, when I was publishing with New York, when I stopped at book number 18, and I really started, lear- really started learning the business and, and getting involved in it. And for me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back. Yeah. But it takes time. I mean, they were going to go back to being impatient. <laughs> you're not going to learn any of this overnight it takes a long time it does it to, does. to really to really get the inside out but it but it is important i i think it's also um jane i'd love to have you make some come on comment so what a literary agent does not do uh they're not there to market and promote your book although they may certainly help spread the word through their own social media channels or or talk about your work at conferences, they're, they're not going to be doing the hands-on marketing and promotion. That's the publisher's job, and that's your job as the author. Um, and they generally don't get involved in any kind of sales of work that's not in book form. There are some exceptions, like if you're selling to the New Yorker or like to the really high-profile places, they may get involved But generally, they make their money on your books and your book sales, so that's where their job begins and ends. The whole uh, figuring out where you want to go, where you're headed, generally that's that's on your shoulders, although, of course, you can consult with your agent. Uh, Well, you should consult the agent, but I I think the one thing, and we're we're coming up to our next break, but I want to talk about what some publishers are not doing now, some as well. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Want to publish like a pro today? Well, then take a look at Ingram Spark, the only publishing platform that offers print and ebook services through a single source. Upload, edit, and manage titles all in one place. Take more control of printing costs with print on demand and reach even more readers through one of the world's most extensive distribution networks. Built by independent publishers for independent publishers, Ingram Spark has everything you need to maximize your book's potential color printing ebook distribution print on demand global reach and more start publishing with ingram spark today and see just how far your titles will go tomorrow that's ingramspark.com many of us have dreamed of writing a book some of us even have then the hard work starts You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 602- 866-3226-1106-DESIGN. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. 
They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Yeah. Yeah. Jane, you know, when I, I have a question before we jump on to something I was just that just came into my brain. On the fiction books that have kind of flatlined. Um, I know Dan Brown had a big book last year. Is it because the big guys are down in their sales or the mid-list books are not picking up or do you have any thoughts on that? Fascinating you should mention that because it is true that the really big guys aren't selling in quite the big quantities that they once were. So ah. that is playing a role as well. Uh-huh. So so the, the having a million, uh, well, I guess in the news, uh, this summer was the James Patterson Bill Clinton book. Yeah, that's and, that's the big title. That's the big title. And how is that doing? Do you have any inkling? Uh, I haven't seen any reports yet. It's a little early, but that it will be fascinating to watch how that unfolds. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, get some of the controversy that is hopped up. <laughs> yeah, uh, it hopped up with it. All right. So one of the um, uh, is for, for, we were talking marketing. I think we before we. Break. And I uh, asked Jane when we were offline if she would be comfortable um, talking about some of the, the 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 new the new type of publishers that is evolved. Is it really new? Is it a name with? Uh, is it a new name for an old type of entity? And it's it's called hybrid publishing. So Jane, tell us what you know about hybrid publishing, and and then we'll take off from there. Well, the promise of hybrid publishing is that you're going to get the best of both worlds. You're going to get the best of traditional publishing and the best of self-publishing. Now, I don't know who came up with this term, but I find it pretty muddy and confusing to most authors. And it seems like just about any publishing company will apply this term to themselves uh, to make them look savvier, more progressive and more desirable. And it's been working like it's a great I think, marketing gimmick for yeah. the most part. Um, now, that said, there are there are a handful of innovative publishers out there that follow what I would consider a truly hybrid model. Um, and I think the difference here is when the company is practicing a really strong form of curation, meaning they're turning some people away, and that's combined with some traditional access and distribution that it would be hard, if not impossible, for an author to achieve on their own. So like being able to get books on shelves in stores. So uh, one example of a hybrid that I think can really call itself a hybrid is She Writes Press. Um, and they focus strictly on books by women, uh, both fiction and nonfiction. And they do get some of their books into stores. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would say at least 75 percent, if not more, of the so-called hybrid publishers, those that apply that term to themselves, they're just self-publishing companies uh, that are probably charging more than they ought to. 
Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and I'm going to say for <clears throat> the author who's willing to do the work um, that you can get your books into bookstores if that's what your game plan is. I mean, there's lots of independent bookstores that will welcome independent authors, but uh, as well as Barnes and Noble, if we're going to talk about the big one. I mean, they have a they have a small press division that you can apply to, but mm-hmm. but this is the but for all of them. Every author has got to have a marketing plan on how they're going to drive butts to that store to buy those books. Yes, and, and that's what has to be done, and. Even if you're with one of the big five that Jane has referred to several times, um, if if you aren't doing your part of the deal to drive traffic to those bookstores, guess what? They return them. And then you're out of that loop. I mean, I think that's really important, Jane, for all authors to get. They have to be an advocate in here. They do, especially if they're expecting bricks and mortar retail to support a book. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I find that a really difficult challenge for first time authors, especially people who really don't have the experience or background in how these things work, haven't been through it before. So normally for a first time author, I recommend focusing on online retail on Amazon and and eBooks or whatever eBook retailer, you know, of, of their preference, uh, because I think it tends to result in something that's a little more sustainable and satisfying, at least for the first time out. Mm-hmm. But, but again, I'm going to reinforce, it is up to the authors. It's on their back to be an active, active ingredient in this thing called book marketing, which means to get the word out, to encourage people to go to bookstores, um, other and and at worst case is I guess you encourage them to go to the online stores, but if yes. you want the regular retail stores, you've got to get you've got to really uh, get people there. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to work. That's that's my experience. Yep, absolutely. Uh, on that. So, are there any what 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 do you suggest people look for in some of the predators that could get them into trouble? As far as hybrids or more generally? Just generally. I think just generally. What what should they be avoiding? Well, when you're looking at any kind of service to assist you with publishing, you want to look at the background of the people who are helping you and make sure that you can put names with with bios <laughs> so that you understand <laughs> yeah. who it is that's doing the editing or the design or who's helping you with the marketing. Um have do they have experience working in your particular category or genre? Can you take a look at past books they've done or can you talk with other authors they've worked with? So you can get a sense of their professionalism, their track record, if they're dotting the I's and crossing the T's on everything. I mean, book publishing is multifaceted. It takes a lot of different types of talent to pull off successfully. So you want to make sure you're working with a team of people who has all of the requisite skills you're going to want to get that book out and keep it out (laughs) and keep it out yes (laughs) yes again keep it out so it's it's just and and you know everyone you need to uh, go to the google or whatever your favorite search engine is and you really need to look up names and you follow it with words like complaints problems lawsuits scams ripoffs things like that to see if anything pops up and please make sure you go beyond page one, because people who are naughty know how to bury stuff. Would you say that's true, Jane? That is true. You need to be very thorough. And again, I can't emphasize enough how much you can avoid problems by just being able to see who who it is specifically you're working with, that it's not mm-hmm. someone outsourced in Asia somewhere that you're never going to meet, you will not know. Like It, it really pays in, in terms of quality and sales to understand the team of people you're dealing with. I think another danger is when um, the company seems to almost be soliciting you a little too hard. They're trying mm-hmm. to um, make you promises about what sort of success is going to happen. They're not making it clear what your role is going to be. Um, they try to make it sound like it'll be easy or they're going to take the headache away. Um, publishing's hard work for everyone involved. So if someone's uh, you know, selling you something too good to be true, then it it is. 
Mm -hmm. So, Jane, would you say in most cases it's probably better to stay away from uh, that what we call the pay to publish, the self-publishing entities that are the pay to publish? Well, it's a hard question to answer definitively for every person. So mm -hmm. I my preference for people is that they become very entrepreneurially minded and they handle every facet, whether that's hiring people to work with them um, or doing some of the work themselves. So assembling the team that you need, basically starting up a small business is what you're doing when you're publishing a book. That's what I prefer people do, but I understand that that isn't possible or realistic for everyone. So in that case, I think it it's okay to hire a company to assist you. You just have to be really confident about that company and its product and its reputation. And, and, and so and check them out, in other words. Yes. yes. And, and really get into that. All right. So <clears throat> I'd like to, <clears throat> excuse me, I would love to get into some of the areas of, I mean, you've, you've seen, you, you've gone to so many writers' conferences. You probably um, had people pitch to you um, that mm -hmm. involved or showing you their queries and stuff. Um, I'd love to have you kiss on that. Uh, so maybe some tips on how to sharpen up a query. If you're trying to go to a publisher, what what are some of these missing that could be added in that would sparkle them up a little bit? Well, actually, the problem I most see is the reverse of that. There's far hmm. too much information. It's It just goes on and on and on. And you really need so little, actually, to interest an agent or a publisher. Uh, and brevity is your friend. Usually, you know, the more that you hold your cards to your chest or the, the more succinct you are, actually, the more grateful the other person is that you're being respectful of their time and you're getting to the point right away. I think a lot of queries I see are too too much filled with chit chat and other information that's just not relevant to the decision that needs to be made. So usually when I work with writers on their submissions materials, I'm dramatically shortening them and trying to make the story premise pop or the selling handle pop and make it more front and center. All right. So to, to sum it up for everyone, what Jane is saying is less is more. <laughs> and, and and to get to the point, instead of yeah. the whole background of the book, forget that. My book is about yeah. um, and, and go into that. All right. We're going to take our final break. With me is Jane Friedman. She is an expert in all things in the publishing arena and the author of The Business of Being a Writer. We'll be right back. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd.
One of the most important decisions you will ever make is your choice for printing your book. You are choosing a company which will be responsible for guiding you through the process and printing your book at a level of quality and detail that embraces your personal and creative needs. You want to choose a company that when your book finally arrives, you are delighted and ready to move on to the next level and one that is customer focused. Choose King Printing Company and Addy Books to be that company that brings you to the next level. Go to kingprinting.com or call 978-458-2345 and ask for Tom Campbell. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Ryle. All right. So with, we're with Jane Friedman, a terrific book I recommend to everyone, The Business of Being a Writer. And I want to encourage you to, I mean, you really study it. This is something you'll come back to um, over and over again. Uh, to really see, find how to get better at what you do. So one of the things she said as we went to our break is, in, in my summing up, less is more. That when you're, if you're doing any kind of pitching, you got to get to the point quickly. Otherwise, they lose interest. Um, and you often, I, I find, Jane, when they, when they do too much, they get on a random bent and they get off point. Yes. Yes. This happens a lot, too, when people pitch in person at a conference Mm because all of that nervous energy. Yeah. And then the person just feels like they have to keep talking to fill in the space. And it just it tends to go really bad from there. (laughs) And and it does. Jane, I'd love to have you kiss on um, uh, uh, contests, book awards, those kind of things. And I'd love to have us before we exit today. Talk about uh, overall branding and building the author platform. Does that sound like a deal? Absolutely. So talking about contests and competitions, there are several different varieties. There are the type that's for unpublished work and then the type that's for stuff that's already out there. And I know for, for unpublished work, contests can be very motivating. Like it's very exciting and that you have this, you're, you also have a, the benefit of a deadline that you're working towards so it can light a fire and then, of course, seeing if if you've won. You need to be careful, though, that uh, you're submitting to contests where the prize is actually meaningful. Uh, and that might be hard for a new writer to determine, but you should study carefully who the judges are. And if the, if the prizes match the amount of entry fee that you might be paying. So you want to avoid contests where those things seem out of line, meaning that the contest is a cash cow for whoever's running it. Mm-hmm. Um, Obviously, it's it's great if the contest has no entry fee, but sometimes um, those contests might not be as meaningful as those that have to charge at least something in order to pay the judges. Uh, and then the other types of competitions involve published work, and there are lots of different rules and eligibility requirements that you'll find. Sometimes publishers have to enter your work. Um, some are open to self-published and traditional, some just traditional. So it's all over the map. But Mm -hmm. I think this is where you also need to be super cautious about those high entry fees because everyone 
is really hoping for that marketing and promotion boost that happens from winning a contest for a published book. And so there are a range of contests out there that may look exciting and prestigious on the surface, but once you win it, you realize that no one actually pays attention to who wins this contest. <laughs> and you see that it has, it, and it's actually the burden is on you to do any kind of marketing and promotion about the fact that you won. So again, but before you enter any contest, look at the winners. What happened to them? How were how was the win publicized? What seemed to happen post contest win? And see if that's going to help you reach whatever your next goal is. Try to avoid the ego driven play. Mm -hmm. And and well, you know, on the other side of that is that for the author, you know, what you all should be doing is creating your own press release. Go local. Local author wins. Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And 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 do it with your own. You can you can add it to your website, award winning, um, and you can do a variety of things to keep that pushing because people, you know, a lot of people are interested in books that maybe have gathered a little bit more credibilities than something mm -hmm. else. You never know. Sure. Um, and, and then what, are, what have you seen, Jane, the range of some of these contests uh, the, when, they're, when they are not free? Oh, goodness. It, it could be as little as 10 or $20 to um, a couple hundred dollars, if not more. So usually the contests for published work, that's where you'll see the highest entry fees. Uh, usually for s stuff that for, it's like for short stories or poems or essays, that's where you get mm -hmm. the lowest entry fees, like five or ten dollars per piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there, and it's a different area. All right, so let's let's the uh, we'll uh, move ourselves into branding for an author, and um, and and I always think the my opinion is it's the author who should be the branded person, um, but you may have some different opinions about that. I always think the brand does start with the author and the author um, is creating some sort of expectation. So that's, and for those authors or writers who are kind of intimidated or feel a little queasy about the idea of them being a brand, that's the word I try to use instead. You're creating an expectation in people. So over time through various different touch points, whether that's your social media, your websites, the book covers, the titles, whatever it is that you're saying in a public venue that creates certain ideas and expectations about what you do or what you're going to do next. So you as the author drive that you, through the words that you use, the imagery and other aesthetics. So be intentional about it. Tell the story that you want to tell and that you want people to associate with you. Mm -hmm. And that makes a difference. That makes a huge difference mm -hmm. um, with that. And then it carries with you and, and branding, <clears throat> Branding overflows not only with taglines and and your outcomes, but just the whole imagery of what you do. do. I mean, I, I have a, a series of little books, five by seven, called the Author You uh, Mini Guide Series, and my most recent one is how to create a million dollar speech um, mm -hmm. based on your expertise or your book uh, mm -hmm. in that, and they all have the same look. You know that you that you can see the branding is all over them. Of any yeah, process, yeah. so they're easily recognized, and I think that if if any author wants to take a look at branding, look at some of the the well known authors. I, I mentioned earlier in the program Dan Brown. If you look at his books, it's his name that's humongous. That's the brand now, and then the 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 book title becomes a, almost a subset of the name. That's my experience. Jane, do you have anything um, different from that? And that's exactly uh, it. And I, the one thing that I see missing from early career authors is is consistency. There's just a lot of they're thinking in a lot of different ways about what they do, or they feel a little uncomfortable about focusing on one thing, and so that and they end up expressing their brand or creating an image for it in lots of different ways across lots of different avenues, like. You know, mm -hmm. and this could be just as simple as having a website name that's different from the name they go under on social media that's different from the name they put on their books. Mm -hmm. So you just want to get really disciplined and look at all of your assets and make sure they align. And then and I guess that kind of will lead into it becomes part of their platform. Mm -hmm. So, Jane, what's your definition of a platform? At its core, platform is an ability 
to sell books, if we're talking about in terms of publishing. But on a broader level, if we're just thinking about um, what you might do that's aside from book publishing or book sales, it's your visibility to your audience, which then leads to all sorts of good things, like the ability to get paying work or opportunities um, to build connections that uh, lead to better career outcomes. So usually when authors are thinking about platform, they're trying to build one in order to land a book deal. So to be appealing enough to an agent or a publisher that the publisher says, yes, we want to publish you because we have confidence the book will be visible to its target readership. So in the idea of platform, there's also this seed of who would who is it that you're actually visible to and sometimes one of the difficulties that comes into play is especially for nonfiction authors like if you're a doctor or a lawyer and you have this tremendous platform associated with your profession as a doctor or a lawyer and then you're trying to let's say write this other book um, that may or may not play into that expertise. That's when you have a disconnect between your established platform and this other book that you're doing. So sometimes these things need to be brought into better alignment. Which is always exciting. (laughs) 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 Which is all exciting. All right, Jane, we've got two minutes to go. Um, And one of the things I asked Jane, what, what does she wish that people would do before they reach out for her for consulting? And by the way, let me mention Jane's a website. It's just Jane Friedman, F-R-I-E-D-M-A-N dot com, where you can certainly engage her um, there. But I asked the one question and she said before talking with them or calling me or approaching me is they didn't ask their questions on the Internet to see what they come up with. Do you want to expand on that in our last minute here, Jane? Yeah, publishing is an area where there's so much advice online and it's actually pretty straightforward to figure out answers to questions like, how do I get published? How do I find an agent? How do I write a book proposal? And so it's smart to educate yourself and read some of those basics first. And what will happen is that you'll see there's some conflicting advice out there. There are different Mm -hmm. opinions on how these things get done. And that's a great opportunity to then consult with someone who can help figure out the right next best step for you amidst all of that conflicting advice yeah because it helps us know where you've come from yeah um you know do we have to start from the truly newbie green stage or are we a little bit more sophisticated that's always a home run yes (laughs) with that all right jane friedman thank you so much for being with me for the hour and for our listeners very much enjoyed it thank you for having me on the show you're so welcome so just a reminder everyone the name of james latest book the business of being a writer Highly recommended if she's speaking at a writer's conference in your area, for heaven's sakes, get registered and go and experience her knowledge and her expertise. This is Author You, your guide to book publishing. I'm Judith Bryles, your book shepherd, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Happy publishing and get to writing. being a part of your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles